Okay, here we are, part two of parallel payments with adaptive payments. We just wrote our create pay function, and if we check out the browser, we can see we have a successful payment created. Now it's time to set our payment details for all of our individual items. So, details packet equals array. Let's talk about this packet. So, uh, we need that same request envelope from before, so I'm just going to copy that. Again, all, all details needed that, so I'm just going to copy that over. That's the first thing. Second thing we need is pay key, capital K, pay key. And we can get that from response pay key, like this. So I'll just keep that there. Okay, pay key, done. Now we need receiver options. So receiver options, which is an array, which is confusing because now that takes an array of arrays. So we have an array and we have, so note to new people and people watching before, we have two receivers. So we need two arrays and receiver options. Two receivers, two receivers here, okay? So what does each receiver get? Each receiver has an array of data, of course. And actually, let's see, array, array. Okay, so we're in our first receiver. So the first receiver has a, as you would imagine, a call receiver, which is another array with the email address. And the email address, I'm gonna make my my I'm gonna make this, you know, we'll keep it in order. I'll call this Chris PayPal. Okay, receiver, boom. Next thing we have next to receiver is invoice data is, as you would expect, an array. Invoice data doesn't have anything except item, which, as you would expect, is an array. And here is where you have all of your items. So inside of item, we have array and array. So we're going to have two, we're going to have two items per person. So array, array, and again, this could be as many items as you want. Okay, so this is this is the setup for one receiver. So I'm going to copy this whole thing for a second receiver. Okay, and this is going to be my second guy, which is Sean at squarebracket.com. Now let's talk about each of these guys. So each each uh, item, okay, needs to have three things. It's got to have the name, which I'm going to call this uh, product one. It's got to have a price, which I'm going to call uh, one dollar. And it's got to have an identifier, which we're going to call uh, P1. Note that price and identifier are not required. Actually, none of these are required. This is information that we want to pass through so that we can get it again when we use get payment details. Again, we're setting payment details. So I will create two products like this. Now, keep in mind, and this is very important, and you need to make sure when you do math for your application that you take really good care of this. The addition of this price plus this price need to match this amount. Okay? Let me repeat that. This price plus this price have to equal that amount. And that's this amount because this is Chris PayPal and this is Chris PayPal. So this says $1. These are both $1. That won't work. I'm going to raise this to $2 so that two dollars equals one dollar plus one dollar okay I will now copy these two items and paste them down here because my for my second guy and I'll make this two dollars and three dollars which is a total of five dollars this needs to be five dollars okay now we've created our payment details packet again it was a little confusing of how to set this up but I hope you followed through there so now that we've created our payment details packet uh, which is, that can't have a semicolon there. <laughs> and there's the top of it. Okay, so now that we have that, we're going to go ahead and do response equals this underscore PayPal send. And we're going to send our details packet. And we're going to make an API call and call it uh, set payment options, not details options and I don't need a quote here so details packet set payment options and then we will debug our response so let's take a look and see if our packet uh, comes back successful
and it does success so we have a created packet we have a created payment and a successful pay now let me prove to you how this would fail if you did this incorrectly so I'm going to change my five dollars to four dollars note that four dollars is not the summation of these I will refresh and it will throw me a nice juicy error failure the total invoiced amount for Sean at SquareBreaker.com does not match the amount in the pay request. There you go. So here is how you look at errors. And if errors come up, this is what they'll look like. And they give you details here. So note that they have to equal. If you're doing a bunch of addition on your own, you need to make sure that they are equal before you pass this through because you don't want your users seeing these errors. Putting that back to five. Okay, now let's do one more call and let's confirm that we got our details, that all of this wasn't in vain. Let's go ahead and make a call to get payment options. So before we do that, let's actually write our function for get payment options, which is going to be super small. It's going to be our packet equals an array, and that array is super small. It's just going to be our request envelope down here. So let's copy our request envelope. We need one for every request like that. And you know what? While I'm at it, while I'm at it, I'm just going to go ahead and, and do this, this uh, envelope equals uh, is that all I want? Uh, do, 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 do. <sighs> Let's see. Right. So you can't quite do it as simply as I was just saying. We'll go ahead and do that like that. So we don't have to keep writing this every time because that's just annoying. Okay, so there's our this envelope. So now we can just this envelope um, and now we can just say this envelope there and down here. Yeah, thank you. And down here we can say this envelope and down here we can say this envelope, comma. Boom. Okay, comma, comma. Request envelope. Do we need anything else? Yes, we need a pay key. So we need a pay key, and therefore we need to pass it in. So it's pay key. We're going to apparently pass it in later. And then we will just do a return this uh, underscore PayPal send. We're going to send our packet, and we're going to do get payment options. OK, get payment options. Send it to pay key. So come down here. After we debug that, we are going to say deets equals this, boom, that, with pay key. And we will debug debts. Now, why are we doing this? We are proving that you can do this anywhere in your code and get the payment details. Refresh. Unexpected error on line 23. It does not like me very much. 23, yeah, semicolons. Need, uh, yeah. OK, refresh. And and boom failure undefined variable pay key on line 125 because I didn't make it a pay key variable that's why because it is a response pay key so up here I will say pay key equals whoa not that equals that boom pay key and not store it that way boom and down here pay key now we will refresh and with any luck. Okay, boom, and here are my product details. So you can call this with any pay key anytime to get these details from PayPal. That's awesome, and here's all my shit. So, next step. Now that we have this and we've proved it, let's actually send our buddy who's calling this over to PayPal. So, header, location, and we will send them to PayPal URL, which is Boom, so this PayPal URL, and we will add to that because that asks pay key equals pay key. So we will head over to PayPal. Make sure this is sandbox. It's not sandbox. Sandbox. I'm not sure that's going to work. Let's find out. If I refresh, it should take me to PayPal, hopefully without an error, probably with an error. Hopefully not, or not go anywhere. Undefined variable PayPal, PayPal URL. I think it's this PayPal URL. Right, because you don't do that when you do that. Awesome. And 
we can't head we can't send the headers already so we need to get rid of our debugs because we can't send headers and do this okay so cross your fingers no error on paypal no error on paypal let me do this sandboxing sandbox let me do it make it happen boom made it happen yeah whatever okay so you can see here that we've made two payments from this guy to this guy two dollars five dollars total seven dollars the other thing to note is that it does not list your item data and it won't there's nothing you can do about that you just have to deal with this but at least you paid multiple people didn't you go you so there you go that is how you awesome 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 pick bro so that is how you do parallel payments adaptive payments whatever you want to call it in JSON format, etc. Part two. If you didn't understand this, go part. Go watch part one. Sorry, I spoke really fast, but I'm tired of doing this today. Not the video. I'm tired of working on this today. Anyway, yep, you're good. Bye.